All right, so we just kicked off. Huh? Hold on one second. I just kicked off the intro song. Okay, what did you say again? Welcome, welcome, crew and new listeners. Secure your tinfoil hats, put down tight, and hold on loosely as we soar over the rocky tops of the La Plata's on Rocky Mountain High. Get sucked into the vortex of the Four Corners and settle down snugly at Ma Marker 420 in Colorful, Colorado. It is Saturday, September 10th, Sunday, September 11th, for those of you across the pond and beyond. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, and welcome to We Are Paradox Media's Late Night in the Rockies. I'm your host, Tessa TNT, and we are broadcasting live from the Mile High Clubhouse tonight. If you're listening live right now, you may be listening to us on Spreaker.com. You may also be listening to us on KPNL Radio, which you can find on KPNL at kpnl-db.com. If you want to listen to us in your free time, whether you're working, working it, or working out, feel free to look us up once more on Spreaker. You may also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Tumblr, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podvine, Podcast Chaser, and Amazon. So tonight I have a treat for all my guys and gals out there. Tonight we will be talking to the group Tangipahoa Parish Paranormal Society. And the group consists of Lindy, Josh, Tommy, and we also have Eileen on the show tonight. So Lindy is from a small town in Mississippi, a mother to two amazing kids. She is a paranormal investigator with Tangipahoa Parish. And she has always been interested in the paranormal because of her own experiences. Since actually investigating, she's not only been able to help spirits, but many people along the way as well. And she has met some really amazing people who have become like family and taught her so much along the way. Josh Williams grew up in South Louisiana. He is the co-founder of Tangipahoa Parish Paranormal Society. And he was always a skeptic until he started going out investigating. The paranormal world has shown him a lot of amazing things, and he's met a lot of great people also. Tommy Brumfield is co-founder of Tangipahoa Parish Paranormal Society, and he grew up in southern Louisiana and lived there his whole life. He's always loved horror movies, especially ones dealing with ghosts, and throughout his childhood, He would experience weird things every now and then, but didn't really think much of it at the time. As he got older, he thought, maybe there's a little truth to all this. So he went out with an analog tape recorder and went to a local cemetery and caught an EVP. That's pretty much what did it for him. Um, He has met so many great people. 
people along the way that have become like family, and he's looking forward to seeing what the future holds. And then we have a bonus tonight. We've got Miss Eileen Jones on with us, and she is with Backroads Paranormal and has been officially investigating the paranormal since 2015, which led her to appear uh, appearing in the number one paranormal documentary that was released in 2020, The House in Between. In 1998, Eileen became interested in the paranormal after she was awoken by a male apparition standing over her. Her favorite part of investigations is meeting new people and learning new techniques from them. Well, welcome, you guys, and thanks so much for coming out and hanging out with me tonight. Yeah, I'm so glad you came in. <laughs> yeah, Tommy's like, yeah, just a little bit, I guess. I suppose. Oh. <laughs> so, um, what have you guys been up to lately? Okay, hold on one minute. For some reason, it's not picking you guys up. This is terrible. Okay, let me look over here. I believe it's on my Skype. Let me go to my settings really quick. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now I can't hear you. Let me see. Um, maybe this one? No. That is so weird. Okay, hold on a second. Well, I can hear you on the headphones, but like I said, it's not bouncing over here, so let me see if I could change this really quick. Nope. Sorry, guys. Alrighty. <clears throat> Okay, that's picking me up. You guys can just like continue to make noise just so I could see like what popped up here or whatnot. Yes, 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 yes. Man. This is so disappointing. I can't believe this is happening right now. Uh, right? <laughs> I know there's certain guests I have on. It's like all hell breaks loose. And <clears throat> I don't know. I'm trying to remember. There was a certain app that. Right? Paratechnical issues. <laughs> yep. Damn it. All right. So uh, while that's going on, I'm going to try to multitask. Uh, so I'm going to try to get this figured out and talk at the same time. So <clears throat> as far as what's been going on with me, I've been working security. I did a day shift, which really goes against everything I believe in. And uh, <laughs> um, last night I worked overnight security um, over at the museum for the Sky Ute. His, like the Sky Ute uh, tribe. Um, and then, tonight I'm supposed to be working too. 
but it's just uh, pretty intense doing that, making some extra money. And then I've actually entered a contest. I, I don't know. A lot of you may know because I've just been rigorously contacting people and being like, come on, help me out, vote for me, because you get free votes every day. And people are kind of leery about it because there's so many scams going on out there where... um Where they say, oh, well, this is free, and then they have you enter your card number, and then they steal all your, your stuff, and um, but this is not like that. So they ask you for your card information or your card number um, just to make sure that it's you, because otherwise, like, anybody could be um, saying, oh, well, this is somebody else, when in fact it's actually the freaking uh, contestant doing it. So, um, yeah, so don't be afraid. If you want to go and vote for me, uh, there's some awesome prizes to be won. I was in first place for the longest time, and now it's gotten to the point where um, now I'm in second place again. Started off in fifth, um, so far as I know, but, yeah, it's just been really, really stressful. I'm, like, kind of at the point where I can't wait till... So this is done and over with because it's just so much stress and it doesn't end until November 10th. But I get, if I win, $13,000. I get a walk-on roll for an independent horror film. I get to do a photo shoot with Jason. Uh, so we're going to go head-to-head -head in the photo shoot, which will go to Morgue Magazine. Um, and then I believe there's one more. Oh, yeah, a two-night stay for me and a guest. Um, at Buffalo Bill's house. So that'll be awesome if that happens. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Amazing. Like I really, really want to do it, but it's like, I have so many friends and hardly anybody wants to vote. And so I'm trying to figure that out. I'm like, is it because of, um, you know, they're asking for the card number and such. And so people are like, oh, this is a scam because there's just like so many scams going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, and for me, like, uh, my daughter, she did it, and she doesn't have a bank account or a bank card, so how is she able to get in there, and um, other people aren't? And I even went through my husband's Facebook account to do it, but I didn't see any other options, so I guess there are ways around it. Um, but yeah, that's keeping a lot of people from voting, really. Sorry, I'm still going to the settings and everything. I've been through so many places so far. This is amazing. But yeah, so that's what's uh, been going on in, in my neck of the woods. So we have till the 15th to get the votes up. One of my friends messaged me last night while I was doing security. And I don't uh, spend a lot of time on my phone when I'm doing security because I'm doing security. Um, but... Yeah, sh uh, she said I was in first place for a minute, and then I looked again, because I looked last night, and then I looked again today, and I was like, no, I'm still in second. So I don't know what she saw, but she thought I was still uh, still in first. I don't know. Still trying to get this to work. Oh, here we go. I think this may be it. Watch me do this, and then it, it won't work at all. As far as both of us. Nope, still going. But you guys aren't there. Weird. Okay, I got you now. Yay. 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 <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so uh, Wendy was saying you can get on there through your Facebook account. So I don't know. I guess there are ways around it. Yay! I can hear you, and I can quit sweating. Like it was already hot in here, anyways. Now I was starting to stress. <laughs> so, can you hear me? 
Yes. Unfortunately. That's uh, <laughs> a twink of fingers. I mean, there's several more at this point in time we could use, but you know, I'm trying to play nice tonight. Oh man, you killed my phone, Wendy. <laughs> I, I had to tell Tessa that story though from Kansas the last time we were on with Tommy. I was to say, which one? The, the, the both. 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 We do not let him live. Anything he does, he does not live it down. We keep we keep records of it. He just can't <laughs> catch a break. Yeah. And I sit home alone sometimes. I'm like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're constantly bullied by me and Eileen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I swear, I think like 10 hours of that trip home, though, was just strictly laughing about that whole freaking situation. And the thing is, we were only gone for two days, so how much comedy could have <laughs> He's like, it was only two days, but it felt like two weeks. We were up at the temple in Salina, Kansas. And um, we're sitting, and me and Lindy are in a room doing an EVP session. And so we sent in Tommy and Josh into the women's bathroom because they said when men go into that bathroom, things happen. So, of course, what do we do? We send Josh and Tommy. Well, actually, and I was in there so, myself because I couldn't even find Josh. <laughs> well, when we came out, we could not, I mean, we could not find them anywhere. And I had told them. Because I've been there one time before. I was like, take very minimum equipment just for the plane fact you're not going to want to lug it up and down these stairs. Because it's, what, six flights of stairs between the sub base yeah, and all the way up to the floor. And so we sat and we searched the, whatever floor we were on for them. So finally, finally, Lindy and I were like, you know what? We're going downstairs. So we hung out downstairs. We're like, we're going to go back to the hotel room. I said, they're gonna, our luck, they're going to lock them in this temple <laughs> And we're going to get stuck in Kansas till you know, whatever. And if we don't go back and they're not already back in the ring, we're like, what in the world? So thankfully we did leave them, but we were kind of hoping we'd get a whole, whole hotel suite by ourselves. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that didn't happen. The best thing that was walking through that door and Tommy looking like a chipmunk, well, a mixture between a chipmunk and a deer in headlights. <laughs> Scarfing his food down, like, oh, hi, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. With his towel that I thought he was using as a napkin, but come to find out, he had a restriction of using it as a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> that was my blanket. Was like, you know, the breakfast, and the, now keep in mind, this is. A hotel suite with a living room. I mean, there were so many of us. So living room and then the bedroom and all that. So I walk out of the bedroom and he's on the couch in the living room and he's curled up in this little towel. And I was, like, did, you not, yeah. I was like, did you not go get the linens? And it has a pull-out sofa, by the way. And he's sleeping on it just as a sofa. And I said, like, he goes, well, I didn't see any. I said, did you look in the closet? He said, well, I didn't <laughs> think about that. <laughs> Pillows, blankets, everything you would need. Hey, don't make fun of this blankie. <laughs> yeah, me and my towel did just fine. He needed his blankie to go with his twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be remembered forever. I'll go down oh, no, to the books. No, no. It's the body wash. The body wash. The body wash was the best. That was the best. Oh, that was the best. oh here we go. Lindy, go for it. 
<laughs> no, I'm gonna let you because I think I talked about this last time. I'll let you tell us. Yeah, you, yeah, you did. So, no, I don't remember every detail, but you know, the end result was what was funny. But um, <laughs> so we, Wendy and I walk in there, and I think we thought like Josh and Tommy were in the shower, so we were just killing time letting them because it had the, the hotel had two showers in it. So we were letting them shower. <laughs> <laughs> so we were outside the hotel kind of just chit chat. So we came on up uh, and he's like, Oh my gosh, I gotta show y'all something. I was like, What? And he goes, There's douche in the shower. We're like, What are you talking about? Because we had already taken ours. We're like, what are you talking about? There's douche in the shower. And he's like, No, no, come here, come here. There's douche in the shower. Now this is like a Hilton or something. So we go in the shower, it's hanging on the wall. It was douche, which is, I guess, French or whatever for body wash. <laughs> he, got, he, had, he, couldn't, he couldn't wash himself off because he thought he had douche in the shower. <laughs> you know? And then the corner of the hallway was like, I, he's like, I couldn't figure out how in the hell y'all are about to use that. Like, he's like, there was no hoses, no hoses. And this thing is like up high on the shower wall. <laughs> oh, hey. I would have been cleaning either one. Well, I was going to use it. You were going to use it? Huh? <laughs> Do what? You were going to use it? Is that what you just said? Yeah, if I didn't have a chance to make do it clean. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the fun side of investigations when people just kind of get together. <laughs> And just have fun. <laughs> and pick on Tommy. Yeah, get to know each other a little bit and build character. Pick on Tommy. He's always like the brunt of the jokes, like every time. Doesn't matter where we go. And he always meets a friend everywhere we go, too. Like, we cannot let Tommy go in. Like, if we stop at like, a store or a dollar store or a hardware store for that matter, do not let Tommy go in because he's going to spend like an hour in there. <laughs> Meeting friends that think he's a celebrity. <laughs> so on the, way to, on the way to Kansas, the day before there had been tornadoes in the area, and so we're. I mean, the guys have this great idea. We're going to take Josh's truck all the way to Kansas, and so all of our paranormal equipment's in the back. All the food, of course, because we're very much into food, is all in the back seat with uh, Lindy and myself, and. Um, so we get, I mean, we're, we're hours into this trip into Kansas, and it starts coming a downpour. So we're like, okay, we're going to move all the equipment in the back seat. And Lindy and I looked at each other and was like, there's no way. We will not have a place to sit. So we're like, okay. So we pull over into um, Harbor Freight to go get some tarp. And so here comes Josh out with stuff, and we're trying to get the tarp. And, you know, I'm a city girl. The tarp and stuff just And the wind is I like... Think. The wind is horrible up there, by the way. So this thing is, like, blowing everywhere. Like, it's taking all of us to, like, hold this thing down. And so I end up leaving it to Lynn because she knows what she's doing. The whole time we're trying to do this, Josh is inside talking to the cashier. We, we're, like, going, can we please get him out here so we can cover? By the time he's out, it's quit raining. <laughs> I was like, great. No, we don't even need the tarp anymore. Jeez. <laughs> See, so it, it, it kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter where we take you. If you go inside somewhere, like, you're going to sit there. Like, I don't know. Like, people must, like, think you remind them of somebody or something because they are constantly, like, don't I know you? And then they they tend to have, like, this whole, like, two-hour-long conversation with you. No, like, no matter where we're at. And we have to drag you out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, here we go again. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they, the, they only need me. The funny thing is, Josh is just the opposite. We we have nothing to pick on him about because he's so quiet. No, I got him the other night over there at the client's house he's, he's a, because we were getting smart. activity. And then as soon as Josh decides to open his mouth and talk, which is like one in a million, like the activity stopped. I was like, really? Like the man of few words decides he's finally going to say something and then the activity stops. Like what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> like go back to these mute. 
<laughs> and that's just the way he is. I mean, I've known him for like 13 years, and that's that's just how he is. He's always been quiet. Like we could be on a a two hour trip, a three hour, four hour, whatever, and we might say two words between the two of us. It's just. I don't know, because when he back from Kansas, he talked a lot, like, about the whole, like, making fun of you thing. Like, he, but he was laughing so hard, he couldn't really make out what he was saying. Oh, no. <laughs> Once something like that happens, yeah, you can't shut him up. <laughs> but he was in the first, like, five minutes of the trip when his wife called. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one of the time I went into their house, he's like, okay, just go to bed. <laughs> he was so nonchalant about it, too. Like, oh, it's fine, just go to bed. <laughs> and me and Eileen are like, oh, okay. That's not the answer we would have wanted. <laughs> I was looking at the video as he was talking to her, like I could see her or something. Yeah, I looked at him, I'm like, you know, that's all you're going to say? Is, huh, just lock up and go to bed. <laughs> so uh when exactly did eileen come into the group so you've been here for longer than i realized i think i met tommy and josh we were um at um what was it february of last year that uh we were at the old southern funeral home in Kosciuszko. And I was with, um, I was on the team with David Childers at the time, and we were, they invited us to go to um, 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 an older home here in um, uh, southern Mississippi. And that's kind of how I ended up being a tag along with them. And then I think Lindy, before that, though, I about to say, Lindy and I had. Um, investigated together at back in 2020 um, at uh, a Central Mississippi Hospital area, and I had met her. And then I think she ended up going over. You ended up going with TPPS, and then we met up on a different investigation once you were with TPPS. Yeah, Mississippi's small, and even though they're Southern boys with a weird name, town, or whatever parish. Um, they're still on their honorary Mississippi boys. Hey, you can finally say it though. You can actually say it. you don't have to say TPPS. You know, you finally learn well, how to pronounce it. Tangipahoa. <laughs> Tangipahoa. You, you, you didn't call them call them the hoas. The hoas. Yeah, I swear to God, it was like PPP, not TTT. So I was like Tangipahoa. <laughs> Yeah it's, kinda right. weird cause, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird because, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird because, you know, the, like Eileen said, we met at the uh, funeral home and we, you know, we invited her and uh, David Childers <clears throat> to come along with us. And then uh, I'm like, well, David called me, I think, the day, the day before the investigation. And uh, he said he wasn't going to be able to be able to make it or something like that. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, he was moving to New Hampshire that day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was supposed yeah, to be there at that location, but they wound up canceling last minute. Yeah, that's what it was because uh, I was in the I was at the hospital <laughs> and uh, with my wife, and um, she had surgery. But uh, anyway, uh, he told me he couldn't make it. I'm like, oh, shoot! I said, Eileen don't know us from you know whoever. I said she's not going to come with us. But then she messaged me on Facebook and I said, Hey, y'all still want me to tag along? I'm like, Yeah. And ever since then, I'm like. <clears throat> you know, so she's kind of been tagging along. I'm the, I'm the one that can't get rid of And I'm going to actually say it. I like you, Eileen. Oh. So, <laughs> oh. You, you better write right? that down, Eileen. <laughs> yeah, can you repeat that so I can record it really quick? Wait, it's already going to be recorded. <laughs> I like Eileen yeah. Jones. Oh. Mark that on your calendar. calendar. Yeah, yeah, you better. I just enjoy having another female that can come along and like talk shit with me. Like it, it's nice. Yeah, even though, even though we all give each other crap, but it's all out of all out of love, I guess. 
Oh, and, I, and I pick on people hard. And the more I like you, the more I pick on you. And Donald Martin was on one, was on my podcast last night, and he uh, he manages the the field home we met at, and he started talking crap about me. Well, my sister jumped on for the first time ever, and she doesn't know how hard I pick with everybody, and that they pick right back with me. And she started going at Donald. I was like, she's oh, like no, ready no, to no, fight. <laughs> she's like, oh, oh. She's my older sister. I was like. I appreciate it, but we're good. Yeah, the only new, huh? <laughs> well, I will tell you this, Tommy. Um, so, you know, for, I know that they know, but my husband has recently joined my team, and he's like, when are we going to get back with you? And he's, no offense, Lindy, he always says the boys because he doesn't care about his girls. And he's like, when are we going to go back with the boys? When are we going to go back with the boys? I'm like, okay, we'll get back together with the boys soon. Just shut up. <laughs> it's okay. He doesn't have to like me. He likes my teammates. It's all right. We don't get girls. We'll, we'll stick together. We'll like, be some stinky boys together. Yeah. I, I, really think he, you know, I think he had a good time the last two times because uh, – well, the very first time was at the, the hospital, and uh, he said that was the first one he's ever actually been a part of. Yep. And I, I think he, I think he enjoyed that. And then you know, then he came back, and uh, I'm pretty sure he enjoyed that one too. So. Yeah, and that is one thing about the GPS. I mean, they welcome people with open arms. They really do. They. If someone wants to jump on an investigation, they are like, come on. It's all about the evidence, all about the fun. And that's what they really, that's what they're about. That pretty much sums up right there, Eileen. I like it. I didn't say it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know. I think it's true, though, because. I don't know. Like, there was just so much drama involved, like, in the paranormal world and, like, I feel like so many people just kind of got away from like the roots of investigating and the the fun aspect of it too, as far as just going out and having a good time and doing what you love and, and spending time with people that you like and getting to actually investigate. Um, so it's it's good to be around a group that enjoys doing that and keeping it that way. Yeah, and that, yep. that's pretty much what I was about to say too. You know, as far as the drama, you know, we don't have time for all that. <laughs> you know, no, nobody got time for that. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care who who you're friends with. I'm still going to talk to you. you. You never done anything to me, but you know you get on Facebook and oh, okay. You, I'm not going to talk to you. Uh, I'm not going to talk to you anymore because you're you know in cahoots with this, with this person. Yeah, forget all that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Too much ego, not enough fun, and like you said, really getting to the roots of it, trying to help people. Not just on this side, but the other, and it's something we really enjoy doing. So, like, just go out and have fun. There's, yeah, no room for drama, really. No, that's what they're pretty much making it out to be. Well, not everybody, but you know, a lot of people. A majority these days. (laughs) Unfortunately, yeah. Well, I think we've been pretty lucky, though, as far as the people, like, that we've brought in. Like, they've all pretty much seen it like like we see it. We all just go have a good time and gather evidence and just do our thing, you know? Like, and I love being able to take people like Eileen and um, other investigators like Brian Rowley and um, David and all of them, like, on a location and watching how they investigate. Like, you, you learn a lot from seeing other people's aspect of things, you know? Oh, yeah, like Michael's now ready to build a SLS after being with the boys during that chasing of whatever. I mean, that's all he talks about is the cha- when that we were stuck outside and they were chasing that spirit around the location. Oh, yes, yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. I'm glad, I'm glad he enjoyed it. <clears throat> yeah. You just well, it's can't crazy. 
Yeah, with the SLS, huh? it's insane cool. the way they do that. Um, I think Eileen, he was asking you what you said. I don't think he heard what you said about your husband that last that last part. Oh, well, I, I said, yeah, "Don't corrupt I mean, my husband." <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll do my best not to. Well, yeah, it's like it starts so with a connect. Determined that, that was a lie. <laughs> yeah, that was a lie. <laughs> you want to change the story? No, but have any of you guys like I don't know. I love playing video games, and I did have a connect on my Xbox until some really weird shit started to happen, and we unplugged it. Like my kids are. They're playing on it, uh, one of these sports things or whatever, and all of a sudden this little figure showed up. And we've seen this little girl around our house several times. Um, and she showed up on the Connect for the Xbox. And so that's how they make that technology with a certain app you can use with it. I don't know, it's pretty insane. I finally got one um, and got a pretty good deal on it. But it's awesome how it works and how the spirits show themselves in, in this different manner. Whether or not they're trying to, you still pick them up. I love it. I just got to get these boys to start recording it so we actually have evidence of it happening. Just <laughs> watching it a lot of time. Yeah. You cannot blame the boys. It was your recorder that missed the best evidence ever. <laughs> Thank you, Allie. When, when Tommy set off my, my thing, and his face, it was <laughs> It would have caught it, and her her freaking recorder wasn't even record. Her camera wasn't oh even recording. God. We're like, crap. We were talking about that the other night while we were over there. Yeah, and it's weird because was it recording before, and then all of a sudden you look at it and it's not recording. Well, like after it missed that. My, my memory card was full, so it, oh, it just man. stopped in the middle. Yeah. We solved you that problem. <laughs> well, it'd be a lot easier to. <laughs> Did I lose you guys? Okay, so for this no. particular uh, one, ghost one, that two. showed up or whatnot that you guys missed, like, what was it again? I'm sorry. Tell them, oh, tell them about what's going on, Tommy. Hello. Hello. Can you hear hey, me? tell them, tell them about your freak out moment. <laughs> All right, so we we were in this room, and Eileen had a um a motion detector, which was about three feet away from where I stood, and which I thought it was closest but that was another device and uh, but there was these like swinging doors you know like those old western movies they have the doors like three feet above the ground but they're swinging you just walk through them well anyway i just kind of poked my head over there and over them and uh the alarm went off and i was like oh jesus christ <laughs> I just, I just, that is not how you said that first of all <laughs> what <am> I <laughs> That was like once in a lifetime thing. I can't do it again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, we it's, thought we had a good time to pay us afterwards. Uh oh. It, it just about gave me a heart attack. Because <laughs> I thought I did. And then I got to looking up to where the you know, uh, actual motion uh, sensor is three feet from here. I'm like, there's no way I set that off there. So. I don't know, but yeah, it, uh, it gave me a good scare, for sure. <laughs> You're like, shakes my wazoo! Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always Tommy. Always Tommy. And he wonders why he's the brunt of the joke. Yeah. I don't know why you guys are always picking always. on him. It's terrible. I don't know if they're calling him Blunfield instead of Brumfield. Rinf what? <laughs> We're going to start calling them Brunfield instead of Brumfield. Oh, Brunfield. Oh, yes, Lord. It's like no matter what I say, no matter what I do, there's some kind of joke behind it. 
<laughs> we still have to get your poo noodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have a poo noodle right now, but <laughs> don't worry, I didn't forget about that one either. <laughs> yeah, you can't forget about that. But you know he could use that oh. poo noodle with his towel blankie. Be a perfect combo. And my super fine cheeseburger. He couldn't <laughs> use that towel the night he needed the poo noodle. Uh oh. <laughs> Love you, Tommy. He's been, yeah, he's been yeah, banned yeah. from eating quail eggs before a location. <laughs> Yeah, can't do that. He is on a strict diet of Slim Jims and Twinkies. <laughs> Damn. I'm just going to quit on me. I'll be all right. Well, it's hard when something's so good. Like, I don't know. You eat too much of a good thing, it can really turn around and literally backfire on you. Oh, it did. <laughs> the bad part is where. Like, we're at a client's house, like, on the property, and so him and I, like, he lives, like, what, 10, 15 minutes from there, probably, and so Josh was just going to take him home, and uh, they leave and get lost, <laughs> and then the hell? Josh, Josh gets, you know, Josh drives like a pop ball anyway, <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to need you to speed up a little bit. He's like, come on, Grandpa, this is an emergency. Yes, now I got to go. <laughs> that tells you how bad Josh wanted to get out of the truck on the way to Kansas with us singing the wheels on the bus because he was high telling it at some point. <laughs> we were trying to keep the boys awake, so we were singing the song that never ends and the wheels on the bus. Oh my gosh. Now, I think what kept us awake was that smell at the freaking rest stop that was like embedded in my nose hairs for like the next two hours. Oh no! <laughs> Y'all found it. Lesson good. learned. Lesson learned. Never stop at a re uh, a rest stop that has no lighting in the parking lot and no eighteen wheelers. That means something's not right. It's like a vampire nest or something. Uh, keep driving. Let's go to the next one. So oh, we we drive like another mile. There's like a big truck stop. We're like really. Hell. Yeah. Sounds suspect to me. If you ever call Mississippi into Arkansas, do not stop at that rest stop on the right. Just FYI. <laughs> Keep going. So coming back from Tennessee to Arkansas, not Arkansas to Tennessee, it'd be on the left for Arkansas and on the right for Tennessee? I think the Mississippi. I, I think it was the Mississippi. I don't know if we ever went in Tennessee. Oh, Mississippi. Okay. Mississippi. Yeah, yeah I don't think we did either. The bad part was the truck stop was only like two miles down the road. <laughs> we didn't know that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and the sad part is like coming back through there because the smell was so awful there. We were all like, okay, it's coming up. Everybody hold your breath. <laughs> well, luckily, the driver didn't pass out. <laughs> So what was the smell like? Was there like a sewage leakage or what? Like a combo? Did you figure it out? Was it vampires? I think it was just the river. I think it was just the river was really yeah. bad there. What do y'all think? The river? Oh, or, no. you know, the river was right there. That's the only real thing I could think of. Like when we say it was so bad, as soon as we opened the truck doors, we had to cover our mouth with our shirt and hightail it to the bathroom. And then we were all trying to breathe in the bathroom to hightail it back. And then it embedded inside the truck from opening the doors. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, man. And then we were all trying they to go in the wrong bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> there was like a women's bathroom on like the left and the right and like I'm going to the left Allie's going to the right and Allie's like hollering at me she's like Lydia you're going in the men's restroom I'm like no I'm not it's the women's and she's like well I'm going in the men's and then she looks she's like no I'm not she's like what the crap <laughs> I think it was like because well, the guy's bathroom was like further down and I think there was two on either side of that one too 
my goodness. I don't know, it sounds really weird. It doesn't take much to in- make um, investigators <laughs> excited. <laughs> right? I know it's the smallest thing. Did you see that? Or did you notice that? I don't know. Um, I was just recently editing my grandpa's. It was his second uh, funeral video that I did. It was the part in Upper Arizona where we spread his ashes. The first one was in California. And it was just really intriguing to me, like, different things that would happen and how the flag would react on the flagpole. Like I said, like, I don't know if it's just, like, I'm open to different things. And I'm like, did you notice, like, when certain things are happening, the flag really goes off and otherwise it's just, like just there i don't know it to me it seemed like more than just a or something like that because of the way everything lined up i don't know okay. huh? what tommy oh. Oh. tommy make your stomach growl if you're still there <laughs> oh. <laughs> need a sign right now <laughs> you can't just do that on demand. Yeah, huh? I just uh, just uh, just get done. I just got through cooking. You did eat, yes. I'm sure like you're in the bathroom. I know. Are huh? you hiding in the shower? <laughs> it sounds like you're in the bathroom. Uh oh. He found the douche. <laughs> <laughs> this could take a while. Yeah, I'm douching. It's going to make it smell good. <laughs> so, what was going to. He's supposed to come in at like, uh, she said, Josh. 9 or 10. So. I think he's going to get a pretty yeah. cool uh, voice message thing going on there. When I was doing my intro, the, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but the lady saying, are you uh, okay with your message? Blah, 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 like four or five times. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I'm like, just keep going. It'll stop eventually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not satisfied with my message. Pound, pound, pound. And but Josh is going to go back and replay that and be like, what the hell is going on? Right? Oh, I'm just so glad I finally got the sound working. Um, but what about the bathrooms at that truck stop? So there was like multiples and were they marked weird or just in opposite locations as they generally are? Or I don't know. What was so confusing about it? Well, like generally, like when you go in there, like you have like a men's on the left and a women's on the right. Well, when you walk through the the door, it's like there's two women like on either side right there, and you have to keep walking through the building. And there was like two more, like the men's, and they were on either side. <clears throat> it kind of set the tone for the trip because I think we were only on the road what two, three hours at that point. We went on the road very long compared compared to how long the trip was. So it was kind of like it set the tone for the entire trip. Well, and Did at this point in time, too, it was probably like, what, like two in the morning? Yeah, something um, like that. We just yeah. waited till about mid- 11, midnight, something like that. Yeah, so Josh goes in there. I'm like, dude, you know this. The, the women's room, huh? He's like, oh, crap. So he turns around and goes to the one across the hall. I'm like, that's the women's room, too. He said, well, where's the freaking women's room at? <laughs> I mean, you couldn't see them because you don't expect to have to. I mean, it wasn't like the doors were very close together. So you couldn't see them. It was way down a hallway. So that it was kind of, it was very confusing. I mean, you know, Tommy is Tommy's not the sharpest tool in the shed. So, oh, sorry, had hey. I had to do a stab. I was being too nice for too long, Tommy. I don't know. I got my feelings hurt. I put a jab in there somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) 
And we try to, I mean, as Lindy more so than me, because she's with a heck of a lot more, try to get his wife to tag along to help us pick on him. But what heck, we leave him at home and have her. She got him good the other day in our group chat, though, with the snoring. Oh, yeah. That was good. Mm. Yeah. She still helps out with that. That's why I love her. (laughs) And that's one thing that's really good about their team is they've all got, they're all very good about researching. They're all very good about, you know, different aspects as well. So they mesh well so that they can really dig deep into every location they do. And I honestly think that's why we lost the location. Because you dug too much? You were finding out too much information? They're like, okay, we got to cut this off right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, I don't think we'll ever be allowed back at that location for that very reason. (laughs) Yeah, I don't either. Scooby Doo put on some different disguises and be like, yo, well, like, we're this other group and we just want to come in here and check it out and like try to see what you can find and, and just report back the least amount of information to them and see how far you can go with it. I doubt that word, but <laughs> Scooby Doo it. Yeah, I mean, I, as far as the, the, the person that's over the place or that was living there or whatever, he, he moved out. Uh, as far as him, I'm done with him, but not done with the location. If that makes any sense. Yeah, so is this kind of business there? Yeah, yeah, because I think he was part, of the, you know, the guy that was living there. I think, I truly believe, uh, which I think I speak for all of us, that he was a part of this whole murder that took place there. Oh, snap. Yes, I agree. Yeah, because I don't think people give investigators enough that uh, enough. What's the word I'm looking for? Leeway. Like, we're not smart. Yeah, we're not smart enough to really dig. They don't realize that's what we do. We dig. That's your job. Especially if you're doing a private, doing a private residence thing, not only are you digging for what's going on but you have to dig into a lot of different things because you do have to make sure that the person that you're dealing with isn't you know going to harm you you know is someone uh, medicated is someone this or the other so you got to look out for your own safety as well as try to figure out what's going on yeah definitely Exactly. But that whole location, though, it was like the more, like, we were already, like, just really confused and, like, by the information that we were all gathering. But then it was like the more that we dug, like, the more mysterious it got, you know? Like, it's, it's like even it's, as far as, like, me reaching out, like, to the historical society and stuff, like, trying to get information from them. And they're like, oh, we don't have, you know, that house, like, listed on our registry. And I'm like, what are you talking about? There's a historical landmark in the front yard. Like, what? Like, I don't know. It just got weirder and weirder. And it felt like it's this little bitty old, you know, little bitty shotgun house. It's like this big old mansion, like a historical marker. Yeah, definitely. And nobody knew. Yeah, and, like, nobody knows anything about it. Yeah, I couldn't tell you about that place. I didn't even know it existed. But even like when you like when you try to Google it or anything, like it has many different names, and then for each name, like it pulls up like a different picture of the house, like the actual name, like on the historical marker. Like when you pull up the picture of it, it's not even what the house looks like. What the hell? Like, yeah, it's yeah. strange. It, so maybe it burnt down yeah. and was rebuilt or something, or when, they're sharing the wrong no, picture that, specifically. That, the same house as somewhere else. The house that you pull up. I mean, it's, yeah, they moved it. This is probably the weirdest that I know I've seen. And it's not like this is a a population of ten thousand people town either. Right. It's, you know, ever someone should know something. 
but nobody wants to talk. That's why you know it's getting really juicy. Oh shit, we're in scary, scary movieville. Well, it's just crazy though because like Spirit literally started like just telling us like a play by play of events that were happening there, and it was all like pretty much validated, I would say, because Spirit called out the people involved, which happened to be the people that were letting us in there, <laughs> calling them out by name. Yeah, they're probably like yeah. non believers, and they're like, I ain't no way they're gonna find shit, and they're like, holy shit, they just found some shit. We better get them out of here ASAP and move to yeah. Bermuda. Exactly. Well, you guys, on that note, I think we should talk about this a little bit more after this music break. We do have to go to our first music break. So on this break, we got Miss Tamara Bubble from the greater New York area with Out the Mud. I'm it, Natural Born Winner. Keep panties laundry and then we got mr roy washington who is our musical host with subliminal you guys don't go anywhere we'll be right back after this music break Without the beat for the clout, I'm the one you 
shouldn't believe the rumors about Spitting and giving you brain tumors A zoomer lets us move and a shaker with the flow Soon as I pop you toes If you had any ego or ego let go If you had any doubt about me just know I'm pleasing to the ears and the eyes and the throat And I ain't giving you no more detail to we to pillow I ain't nowhere close to my greatness I don't do all that boasting just make hits Yo I don't do all that posting naked pics For life and I ain't make this up I can't fake it Fake when you're shaking my hand and the smile on your face shows me even your greeting and meeting and love is hating. I'm actually amazing, but modestly saying I ain't waiting for co songs or playlists. Cause I ain't nowhere close to my greatness. I don't do all that boasting, just make hits. You won't do all that posting, naked your pitch for likes, and I ain't make this up. I can't fake this. I'm telling you now we gon' vibe in the boo. How you crave another feature like I'm your sweet tooth? All my people wanna see me shine, but I don't crave for you to fall cause I don't play with karma. When I slide through, it's gon' be bad timing. Like, watch out, little homie, watch out, I'm in. To be honest, I don't really wear many. <laughs> I don't even really rock panties. Um, let me be clear. I'm used to getting a few new big pair each year from my granny. Uh, couple sexy ones that might come off. And I done had way too much. Any a drunk text go out. They come and eat the sweet juicy pie down there. I'ma go that route. But now, nigga, wrong song. I only need a couple of buzz to turn you on. That's why I started mentioning that lingerie. But pull up to the studio with some long jobs. This verse about to take a turn for the worst. And all them cute panties gonna be long gone. Cause the hating niggas that I wrote. For. They ain't afraid of wordplay, that's why they wrote this far So I'ma drive them wild Thinkin one day, they might hit all about My boy shows this strength Bloody thongs, they even put them head up with pennies On the cover so they wonder how that bubble tastes You can stay mad, be miserable, old, predictable Maybe not even applicable, but yeah, you typical Check your man if it ain't you Cause way too many queens rockin' shades Cause they eyes black and blue Way too many dudes putting hands on the road
taking shots from a penthouse log. Talking trash, you making big calls. Yep, then again, that's only till his phone got off. Come again, yeah, his phone got disconnected. But don't worry, he be back online hating in a second. Back at the crib, remember she paid her phone and her rent. Squash your nigga vegetable salt. Now he souped up in my mentions on some vegetable bro. Leave a comment at the comment, you that thirsty drink vomit. I promise I ain't never seen nobody win her so much time to hate me. Be honest, is you mad at me? Or the fact that I'm grinding, it's a fact that I'm winning. Son, I really be shining. Why you pressed on my diamond? You ready to swing on this little bitty girl? So don't tell me I'm lying. Way too many dudes putting hands on the ground. That make you feel like a man. Miss Hanalena, we go back to Yahoo song. Y'all look at way too many dudes only wanna spawn. But ain't got no conversation, only wanna gossip when we call. Why kicks in these brown dudes? I got a broad daddy like some broad. Why kicks in these dudes? Let these girls fighting on the step until we call. Let me, let me slip you into something real, real soft You prefer the lace and satin or the silk Cause some pretty little rolls They gon' hang off your mouth Super true, true. sippin' pretty, yeah Who the type that rock them cute pennies, yeah Come here, yo, cute, 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 yeah Real cute, you hatin' on a female Cute, cute, real cute Why you mad we gettin' money? Maybe that's why you say good luck Them pennies, shout yeah. Oh, by the way, cute pennies, bro Real cute
see you, Roy Washington, man. What's happening, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They never say it in words, but in deeds, wars declare. Justice is gone, and the sight's not as spare. Especially the kingdom encased in melanin. But these suckers are weak, kings and queens will ride again. Come on. Slackers will badges the white sheets and the maggots. Watch them fall as I tag them, because I'm better than average. A sharpshooter with words with my eye to the scope. And they escape when I've donned the black cape? Is hell no. I'm a ninja for right, who can vanish from sight. Pick you off in the night, but still the Lord is my light. Perceiving uh. all you see, the truth behind the scenes instead of jumping. Bad wagons the light says, believe in me Cause you're a puppet, no doubt 45th turns you out Though I saw your lips moving, no sound came out So I was sent from the heavenlies Born so you could find me Swam and seen the stream to flight during the 90s Landed in grace, wrote a verse of hip-hop Got with Jay and found a taste Was smooth as butterscotch We had good love and money Problems, they be on me But we stayed in the flow And had juice like Manolo They can try to oppress You can try to impress Conscious after success Not as You can look in my eyes I'm here to raise the consciousness For every face and race up in this nation Trapped in poverty Diamond in a rough Need to cut shape it and polish it Bad thoughts cripple life We're getting to be an optimist We can be an optimist Reconstruct apocalypse Broke people always hating Mix me with that gossiping Rose up in the concrete Rain and sun I'm blossoming My people need to be like Kind of Velcro Then we conquer it They can try to oppress You can try to impress I'm just after success None's less You can look in my eyes You can feel it in my vibes Keen on the side And it's all so the 45th is a joke and he's weak in disgust He plans to defy but there's no stopping us If we have to fight, go toe to toe for our lives We prevail and got sight cause only light I recite I blow my lyrics like a shotgun, camouflage inside the tracks, now watch the suckers run. I'm moving fast enough, heads up, now here I come. I designed 50 ways to make this murder fun. I spit the lyrical rain that coat the concrete, that give life and take form. Arise and walk the street, am I the greatest to spit? Feel the spray and we'll see, let it dry all the lies and the truth will point to me. Even when surrounded by a million of seas, I'm the one under the sun who's the greatest of these. I got the Holy Ghost juking and tapping while I'm a rapping. I'm sticking and moving like Roy Jones, I'll make it happen. Even animals move when the novelist is rocking. My doggy started barking, his ears just a flopping. Subliminally, I penetrate camps like an enemy. Flicking the lights, cancel sight, cause you're not seeing me. They can try to oppress, they you can try to impress. Try to impress. I'm just after success, 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 and it's so sudden, no. I got God on my side. I ain't worried about none. If it ain't about money, then it ain't about none. Laughing at my enemies, I know they see me coming. If it ain't subliminal, they can't even see me coming. Hold on. Welcome back, and thanks so much for joining us this evening on We Are Paradox Media's Late Night in the Rockies. This evening, we are joined by Panjapahoa Parish Paranormal Society. And we got Miss Lindy, we got Tommy Twinkie Fingers, and we got Miss Eileen on. You guys, welcome back, and thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. <laughs> I love I how Tessa throws that in there. Oh, I love it. <laughs> We're trying to get Josh in here, but, you know, he's kind of shy. Yeah, oh, I actually just uh, texted him, you know, a few minutes ago and never heard back, so we might just have to call him. Yep. Let's do it again. It's just like hopefully I can get the turn off before that lady. Like, are you happy with your message about five to ten times? Oh. Let me see what I can do. Oh yeah. Okay, so have to just basically re-add them. Holy shikes. I hate how uh Skype just totally redoes things. It's insane. Anywho, so we left off on this house you guys were investigating and the fact that uh, there's so many different pictures of this location and perhaps the house that used to be there was moved away, which happened a lot in history. Um, 
and then a new house was put there or built there. You can tell, like, from the inside of the house, like, where it was added onto and whatnot, but the size of the house compared to the size of the house in the pictures, like, it's two totally different houses. Yeah, so it wasn't just added on to you, like, it's definitely a different house. Yeah. See, yeah. I don't think the house itself was ever moved, because you can tell the age of the house, too, but yeah. it's like, it's just weird. It's almost like they're just either A, someone's just not following through with their job and paying attention, or B, they're just, maybe it's just one of those, and it's just me speculating, one of those hush houses. Ooh, yes. Because some of the things that came up. More towards that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was on break, but also in past shows that we've talked about this um, as far as different things that you guys felt were going on, which are not really good things, which continue to be in our world today. You know, sex trafficking, things like that is pretty rampant. Um, so do you think it's more attached to the land than it is the house or they're just intentionally putting the wrong pictures in there of the house well, I'll let y'all answer that one I'm not really sure on that one it's a good question I mean at this point in time we're just clearly like speculating on everything um, but, but given the mysteriousness of the house and everything that we've gotten, I'm going to say they probably were intentionally put that way. So a lot of people might not remember um, the past shows we did, but you guys did do um, this certain uh investigatory tool where you not only cover your eyes but you put on headphones with a radio box uh sensory deprivation i believe it's called the estes method which was created in estes colorado um but yeah so you really had a very different experience with that than you had ever ever had and tommy had never seen that in you before so you both knew it was time to shut all that down as far as live video etc um, do you want to share with our listeners again what exactly happened, what you were picking up on, not only like visually or verbally, but emotionally? Um, Lord, I mean, they all know me. You know me at this point in time, too, Tessa, as far as my being an empath is like a whole freaking ball game. Um, I don't know, like uh, upstairs, it was just, just bam, 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 like a play by play with her and these two male spirits coming through. But then once we got down by the well, like I started feeling everything that she was feeling at one point. And I think even at some point in time before that, because I was like, I can feel it or something. And I think right before that, like if I go back and watch the video, like Beth even commented, like, watch her body language, they're about to touch her. Um, but it, it was just emotional, and, like, I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there. I didn't even want to go to this location because of things, like, that I had had going on. Like, I really, like, and I kept having kind of spirit come to me and be like, no, you have to go ground yourself. Do whatever it takes to get there, get there, get there, get there. So I can remember going in my dad's garden and, like, barefoot, just kind of doing my thing to where I actually showed up to that location. And, like, after we started doing all this, I was like, okay, like, I know why I, I had to be here. but throughout that second sensory, it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And then it, like, I don't even know because it was so awful, the things that were coming through there. And a lot of it, I didn't even want to say out loud. Um, it, I don't know. It just kind of overtook my emotions, I guess, because I just broke down. And then I got really, really pissed off at the two male spirits. And I was like, no, like my mission here is to help her. And she needs to have her story told. And um, that just kind of became my mission. And I started just kind of being very forceful with them. Like, hey, like, I don't want to talk to y'all anymore. Stop coming through. I'm not dealing with y'all. Like, I'm strictly talking to her, which we never got a name from her. Um, 
we kept getting something coming through. It sounded almost like Eden, but we don't know that that was her name. But I just, I don't know. Like, I want to go back and see if she'll come through again. And Maybe, maybe it sounded her. like Ian and it was oh, Eden. Or, it sounded like it was coming through as Eden. Eden. Okay. I don't know. It was, it was hard. It was hard hearing, like, what they were doing to her. And then in the same sense, like, her coming through and validating it. Like, yes, they did that. Yes, they did this. And then them telling me oh and and we did this you know like it was just it was hard to hear that happening to anybody you know Mm -hmm. and I know like they were like freaking out because they had never seen me like emotional like that like doing century so I know you're hardcore man they're like oh shit we better shut this down real quick and that's kind of what I was going to say is if you, if for people who have never done sensory, um, what I mean, make sure if you do it, you're doing it around people you know, because we could start seeing the change in her, and we had to pull her out. There's been a few times we've had to pull her out, but that one was like the worst time we had to pull her out of it, because you definitely want to make sure, because you're opening yourself up to these spirits. Well, typically, like, and I mean, I just had this happen, what, a few weeks ago, Eileen, like, I was doing sensory, and I actually got jumped by a spirit, and I'm typically pretty good about pulling myself out, not needing somebody else to pull me out, and because that night I did, I literally come out, and I was like, I'm done, (laughs) I'm done, I need to go outside for a minute, Um, but I think that night, like, I was so focused on, like, her, and wanting to hear her story, and have her story told, and just really wanting to help her like I just kind of engulfed myself in it um probably started channeling (laughs) um so I was glad like I was there with people that that knew my body language and and knew how I was in sensory to where they could pull me out I was just being quiet for a second just in case Tommy or Eileen wanted to say something but yeah, it's crazy because there are some people out there that just go on their own and they do these things. And it's like, is that really safe? You know, because to me, you're kind of compromised because you don't have that person yeah. there to pull you out. Like, could you be there for an infinite amount of time and not realize how much time has passed? Or so many different things can happen, I think. So, I don't know. It's kind of creepy. Sensory is already kind of like that. Like, because I know a lot of times for me, like when I'm in sensory, like sometimes it may feel like I'm in there for 30 minutes and may not be in there 10 minutes or, or vice versa. You know, you get kind of lost in it. I mean, um, it, it it's not for everybody and most definitely do not do it alone. Because you're so open and vulnerable. I hear people all the time, oh, I went to this location. Please don't investigate by yourself. I mean, not only are you, again, I mean, no matter what we're doing, not a single one of us are experts, and we're dealing with the unknown, but then you have incidences like, well, we had to come across a different location where you have to deal with the living that Mm -hmm. may be a little crashed out. So it's not safe to ever investigate anywhere by yourself. Well, also, like, uh, structural integrity or whatnot going on. So with our group, we uh, fill out a paper for everybody that talks about your allergies, like any medications, anything else that's going on, what medications you're taking, etc. Nobody else sees this paper, but you have this paper and you carry it in your pocket anytime you go somewhere in case something does happen or whatnot, you know, so they have your information if you're found and they need the medical information and nobody else has it. It's in your pocket. So that was kind of a safety measure we used to use. And it was one of the girls that brought that up. And I'm like, shit, that is like brilliant. I never thought about that. But um, yeah. that's pretty awesome. I think that's something everybody should carry, especially if you go out there by yourself, which to me, I don't know, I have to have somebody with me wherever I go. Because you well, never I mean, know. Eileen brought up a good point, too, about a location we were at not too long ago when it wasn't just spirits we were dealing with. There was humans at the location. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
that were coming out of the building that we just walked out of, you know? So. Yeah, that's, that's scarier than the other side. I think, I feel. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I think my husband be able to pull out his gun for the first time in years. I think that's what sold him on paranormal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's the first time I pulled my gun. (laughs) And that's when those people walked out, or? Yeah, Yeah. we had done a sweep of them of the location, and then we had been in the area that they come. I think they were in the basement, um, and then. We were taking our break, and I called one of my besties, and she's always she's my go-to person to kind of give me a feel of the location. Um, but you know, someone away from the situation, because Lindy can feel everything real very well. But this one's kind of someone who's away from the location and can kind of validate everything we've been dealing with. And so I'm on the phone with her, and I was like, okay, um, well, let me show you. There's a body of water down here. And I was like, mm, I don't have a feeling I need to go down there. So I turned around. I was like, well, let me show you down at the basement. I said, no, nah, I'll show you that later, a different area of the basement. So then I go up to where everybody else was. About that time, someone's coming up from where the water was, and someone's coming out of the building. And they were, they didn't even know we were there. They were so cracked out, they didn't even know we were there. And it's funny, guys. You know, Michael took that, that guy's um, flashlight. He calls it the crack flashlight now. Oh, yeah. And I noticed you had the communication <laughs> number again. That was your handy dandy flashlight that night. He still has that? Oh, yeah. We used it. Um, when we went to Broken Bow this past weekend on our way to Texas, and he, he that's what he says. He goes, I got my crack flashlight. <laughs> so we call him on the other time when we were over there at uh, processing. Yep. That's what he uses every time. <laughs> so we got a free flashlight out of the deal. So, hey, that's a Heck bonus. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, you know, you go in debt and stuff. When you find bonuses like that, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And so, we, you know, like, uh, like Eileen said, we were all outside, you know, these crackheads or whatever you want to call them. They came out the building, so I'm walking around the outside of the building. I got my gun out. Well, I don't have it out, but I got I have it on my side and my shirt pulled up, you know, just in case a cop comes, they can see it, you know, and so I get back to where we originally were and it's almost dark. Well, it is dark by this time. I'm like, man, where is it where is everybody? They just left me out here. So I called Josh. I said, uh I said, Hey, uh, where y'all at? Oh, we're down in the basement. I said, well, thanks for leaving me out here by myself, you know. <laughs> you had a weapon, you're fine. Well, we would just huh? call the stomach growling sounds, and we'd find you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, just so call it a So he told me about where y'all, you know, everybody was, and I had my gun drawn. I'm like, I'm like a cop. You know, I'm walking through these long hallways or a door on each uh uh, a room on each side. Got my flashlight. I got my gun out. And, uh, so I finally found him. I'm like, my dude, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah. No, what was messed up is y'all left um, me and Lindy without a weapon, so we had to go and like create well, weapons, like some little things that we found. <laughs> that's kind of what I was. That's kind of what I was, kind of was, kind of kind of was getting at. Uh, well, that's that's kind of what I was getting at because uh, Josh always has his gun on him, uh, you know, like I do. But he left it in his wife's car, so he he brings out this big old. They weigh like a pound and a half. A big old pair of scissors. Uh, scissors. Rusty scissors. <laughs> uh, rusty I'm sewing like, scissors. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I said, "What you gonna do with that?" He said, "Man, I, I'm gonna stab somebody." <laughs> No, what gets me is like we're like we all calm down and we're like, all right, we're gonna go back and investigate again. And so, you know, here I am, the only one without a weapon at this point in time. And who do they send in first? 
I walk through the door. I'm like, no, I'm the only one in this group right now that does not have a weapon. Like one of y'all get in front of me. He's <laughs> like, uh, uh-uh, uh, not going down like this. Put me in the middle. Well, uh, you know, you guys are armed. Protect me. We even used my motion detector to to put it like around, like at one of the walkway areas, not for the spirits, but just so that if we if the living walked by, it would sound off the motion detector. We would know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, Josh, he's he's walking around with a pair of scissors like he's about to go vampire <laughs> swing or something. Your call has been uh, he didn't answer. No. Nope. Which I, I did. I do have those I I do have that pair of scissors. <laughs> we all took something from there. <laughs> do what? I said, we took the flashlight, you took the scissors, hey, hand <laughs> I do, I, I have them. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, I wonder what's going on. Hey, you know, we still have about 30 minutes to the secondary time, so between this time and this time. But I think, yeah, 9 10 is what you said, right? We'll see. Yeah. We'll just talk about him until then. And his ears will be ringing or itching, you know. I'm like, what the heck? Okay, so sewing scissors. He was about to make, you know, some curtains or a dress or something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Could you imagine how he'd use those? How was he carrying it? Was, did he have it in his pocket? Or is he, like, carrying them? Um, full on in his hand, ready to go. <laughs> Open, I don't think you understand, like, how scary these folks were that we had just seen <laughs> come out of the building where we just were. Well, it's scary, too, because, uh, okay, so back in, you know, the 80s, 90s and such, those are crackheads, but then methamphetamine came in, so a lot of them are meth heads. And how much sleep have they had? How much have they had to eat? How much meth have they done? And what realm are they in right now? I don't know. It can really lead to insanity, and they're so unstable. It's just like there's no cause for it, but sometimes shit really goes down. What was even scarier is, okay, it's an empty location. It's a huge empty location, and the entering point that they decided to go in was next to all of our vehicles. So it's not like when they went in that they didn't know people were there. Because um, we had at least three vehicles there. Yeah. So it's like, you yeah. really didn't care. Right. Yeah, and then, and then like, like, whenever they walked right past you, like, they had no, like, they didn't even they acknowledge the human being. Yeah, I don't well, think it would have been as scary if they would have just looked at us and been like, hey, sorry, dude, you know, whatever. But it was just the fact they literally never even acknowledged anybody was standing around. And we were probably, what, 10 feet from them at one point? Yeah. 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 But sometimes yeah, like in that state, people see people that aren't there or shadow people or whatever. Um, a lot of things are heightened or a lot of things are exasperated in the mind. So maybe they're just like, I'm not going to acknowledge it because it's probably really not there. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. My thing with it is, like, we already know that there are people going in there and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And I'm I'm talking about, like, on a whole different realm, not not just that. But, like, they're in there trying to summon things. Mm-hmm. There's proof of it there. Um, So when people like this are coming in there in that state of mind, like, I feel like it's just adding fuel to the fire. You know, like, it's it's causing more chaos. To an already chaotic situation. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you guys saw these things uh, that they put on the wall, did they carve them, or is it like there's tagging? And I've seen a lot of that going on, like where there's certain signs and symbols and spray paint. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tagging and um. I've I've actually seen it in the daylight there with my own eyes, but then we actually captured it that night in the exact same area on the SLS of probably a good seven foot tall um, 
black figure, lanky, long, slender arms, long fingers. Um, I actually watched it cross down um, one hallway um, about midway down. I watched it in broad daylight cross the hall, which it was kind of slunched over, like, to get through the doorways. But later that night, we actually captured it on the SLS morph and from like a human form up to this tall figure. Tommy, Eileen. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that place messed me up for like two weeks after. Yeah. I think we all came back affected that night. Like, And is that the same place that... For a while, I that, know mine was probably about two weeks too. Yeah, was that the same place you guys were going in and you had to set timers to make sure you weren't in there too long? Oh, yeah. That's yep. it. And we were all, I mean, we're all experienced investigators and we were all like, oh, do we really want to go back in here? But it's crazy because every time we go, like the whole energy there is different. Because the last time Eileen was there with us, and the whole energy was fine, like no problem. Yeah, it, it, like, I don't want to sound like narcissistic, but just like what Lindsay said, I'm like I ain't going back in there, which I did. I, I forced myself to go back in there. For whatever reason, but I, I don't know. It was just we did actually one. catch a really cool EVP that night. Though when we went back in that last time, that was uh, when we captured the hello people. Is it hello oh, yeah, people? Yeah. yeah. Well, at this point in time, like we were just also overwhelmed with like the negative energy there. That like I started calling out the good spirits. I was like, hey, I was like, I know. Like, y'all are here, y'all come help and communicate with us or whatever. And I had just turned on the recorder. And, like, you hear, like, I think it's one of the guys talking, and then you hear me say something, and then, like, immediately it's like, hello, people. Like, clear as day. <laughs> hello, so living cool. beings. <laughs> How are y'all doing? How you doing? Was that? What was what was Tommy called one time, and where was that? I can't remember. <laughs> I was called a, a sissy. Oh no, not a sissy lala wah wah. Yeah. My favorite one was when the spirit called Tommy a weenie. That, 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 that's what it was. How come everyone's yeah, picking on you, oh, living and that, dead? No, that was at Magnolia House. Okay, I couldn't remember where that was. Yeah. Yeah, weenie. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's See, picking on you. It's the spirit, too. Yeah, living yeah. and dead <laughs> are picking on Tommy. What did you do, Tommy? <laughs> Maybe it's a past life <laughs> curse sort of thing. You're like, man, fuck Tommy. <laughs> We're going to fuck with him his whole life. It's okay. Yeah. It builds character. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is about me. I'm just it's a, the joke of the bunch, I guess. <laughs> the butt of the jokes. Uh, thank God, like, Tommy's got, like, a good sense of humor about it, though. And, like, he just kind of, like, laughs and rolls with it. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, I don't care. I, I find it funny. <laughs> entertaining so uh, where's Josh at <laughs> that seems to be the question of the hour hey I try to get him and maybe if you try to call him in here he might come but I don't know if you guys can do that from your phone I'll try again Tommy's like I'm probably being the only guy but it said nine or ten, so he still has T minus twenty one seconds and counting. Right? Because you guys are on um, Central Time, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep, he's got about twenty minutes left before we start trying to pull him in here again. 
What time is it there? Um, here it's eight forty. Eight forty. Yeah. Nine forty here. Yeah. So we got about twenty minutes. So you know, Now, yeah, pretty, now guys, ahead. I missed y'all's last look, um, last investigation at the processing. Did y'all catch anything there last time? Mm. You know, uh, like everything that we typically get from the alley, we did not get this time. But we got lots of K2 hits, like, and we've never gotten K2 hits there, but we did the other night. Um, we did the phone thing again, and actually, like, I was like, hey, like, you want us to call Eileen, which I knew you were on, you were at Birth and Butter or whatever, but um, didn't get anything, and I was like, you want me to call Beth, and it came through on the phone again, um, so we actually called her, um, but as far as, like, the knocking and all that, like, we did hear some, like, little tapping sounds and shuffling of the feet and whatnot, but not a whole lot. Poor Beth that night because we called her from Broken Bow because we were having an issue over at Broken Bow. So, bless her heart. One day she's going to sleep. <laughs> she told me that. She was like, yeah, she's like, it's so crazy tonight. She was like, you're like the third person to call me. <laughs> but I did hear, and I, um, I don't know who all investigated you know, um, this weekend, but I did hear several people say that very active locations that they normally get a lot of activity from there was still activity but it wasn't nearly like it normally was because i know um broken bow was and that wasn't like quiet nothing going on but it was not like broken bow normally yet well i mean we did get some stuff on the sls um i don't think we got anything on the thermal um no no REM pod, like none, nothing like that. Um, nothing really even came through the sphere box. Now that's kind of how it was at Broken Bone. Nothing, I mean, we had footsteps, we had banging, we had, but we just didn't have the normal activity. I mean, like I said, yeah. my last time at Broken Bow, I had something thrown at me. And it just, it just wasn't like that this week yet. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. I don't know. It, I, you know, you get those moments. That's what a lot of people don't realize. You sit around, and that's how you become friends with so many people. Um, if you allow yourself in the paranormal to become friends with people, um, it's because you sit around in the dark talking to yourself or you <laughs> sit around <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, that's how it is. So, uh, you know, I, I'm the best company I've ever had. Yeah, I'm pretty entertaining. And if you can't laugh at yourself, like, what can you laugh at? Um, but no, it does. It takes a lot of practice and and going out, like some people just sit there and not say anything. Well, you got to communicate. Maybe they're communicating internally, um, but I think some outward stimulation is pretty good. Well, some of the best evidence is when yeah. you're sitting there and ignoring the spirit and talking to each other. It's almost like they go, hey, wait a second, you're here for me. It's this yeah. about me. Let, let me do something. I think laughing and cutting up is the best, too. Like, I don't know. It's just got such positive energy. I think it's so good for the environment and the well-being of, you know, everybody there. But, yeah, like you said, you're sitting there cutting up with each other, just talking. Even if it's not even about the case, they're just like, hey. <laughs> like you said, what about me? Well, that's what I like about the crazy fools on with TPPS is, I mean, they, they believe the same thing. I mean, I've been with some people who literally sit on their booties um, and then tell you, hey, go, go check this out, go check this out. And then as soon as, if they don't see it happening, if they don't hear it happening, then it didn't happen. 
you've got to know the people you're investigating with to know if they're saying, hey, I think I'm hearing something. You've got to know that they're not the type that's going to just say that if they really don't do it or don't yeah. hear it. I don't know if that made any sense. Yeah. Well, and too, like, I know, like, at new locations, especially, like, older houses, things like that, like, sometimes, like, I like to just sit in the quiet for a while, too, just to kind of become familiar with the sound that, like, because, you know, like, old houses have it, they make weird noises and creaks and crannies and, you know, like, sometimes, like, it's good just to, like, sit for a while and hear the location to make sure, like, you know, like, okay, well, this is just building or you know, or this is actually paranormal. Yeah, I agree. If that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's good to spread out quiet or, you know, like you said, uh, Eileen, just doing your own thing and not really, you know, talking about the place or whatnot. Um it's kind of like when you seek them out or you're trying to hunt them down. Sometimes, depending on the location, they're just like, leave me alone. They're so sick of it. Um, but I like the newer ones that nobody really goes to. It's just like, sometimes it's hard, though, because I think spirits have trust issues as well. So maybe the people at location that live there or maybe own the place have seen a lot of things. But although it's very, very active, they won't show themselves to you. For quite some time, just depending on what sort of entity or spirit it is, they'll just hide out, and not do anything. We have a, a private client, which the boys have just started coming through. Eileen's been there with me a couple times before the guys came, and the first night the guys were there, we were like, "Okay, like it's kind of quiet tonight. Like maybe it's because y'all are here. Like y'all go outside for a little bit and see it." If you know, it changes with just me and Alvin in here. And we were like in the back side of the building and heard some knocking. And I'm like, undoubtedly they're not walking around the building. Like the guys aren't out there walking around the building, like knocking on the back side. Like they know we're in here investigating. And we were having like equipment issues and stuff and tinkering with that and it happened again. I'm like, I'm just gonna go out here and just like chew them out. Like what is going on? Well, they were around on the other side of the building, but they heard it too. And we're walking around there trying to figure out what it was. Um, and then, of course, like once they came back inside, like, I mean, it was still, we still had activity. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes I think like it takes spirits like a couple times of like you come into a location um, for them to be like, okay, like you are just here to like help or, or communicate or whatever. Like maybe now I'll I'll come talk to you, you know. Yeah, or it's the cat and mouse game, like, we don't want you over here, yeah. so we're going to send you over here, and it totally takes you off course. Yep. But yep. every case is different, you know? Yeah, it was either our first or second time there. It was um, me and Lindsay and a girl that's on my team, and that's when Lindsay felt like, she had gotten rushed and so we had she had felt somebody tugging at her shirt but she didn't say anything because that's one thing I do respect about her she's like me where she's going to sit there and sit on it for a few minutes and try to figure out what it was before announcing it and um so then about that time you heard those um doors squeak well, then she comes and jumps in my lap, which freaks me out because she's <laughs> behind me. But did she well, like, I've been sitting was... there, I like having that tugging or whatever. And then, like, of course, like we're at a private client's house, and I don't like to just like throw that out there because I don't want to like spook them out or freak them out, you know. So I'm just sitting there dealing with the tugging, and I guess it was like, okay, you're not going to acknowledge me. I got you. And like, I'm sitting there with my back to these swinging doors, and literally like we all like everybody in the room hears these doors sound like they're being opened and that it's literally right behind me and I'm not fixing to just turn around right there to figure out what the hell's behind me so I'm like jumping over Eileen trying to get further away from the door where I can turn around and see what's going on 
But I think it was like, okay, like you're not going to acknowledge me by me tugging on your shirt. So here you go. <laughs> Let me do something bigger. Yeah. So do you guys have um, anything else going on with that or any future plans for other investigations? Well, I figure we'll go back to that location we were just talking about some more. Um, but I know Eileen's got an event coming up um, in October we're all planning on being at. And then um, another friend of ours, his team is putting on an event the end of this month over in Natchez at the little theater and the parsonage, and we're all going to help out with that. So we've, we've got things in the work. So Eileen, what is your, um, your event that's going to be happening? So, um, October 22nd, we've got, um, the old Southern funeral home and the old Tyler County jail in Kosciuszko, Mississippi. It's going to be a few of us putting on an event there. And um, I think that's, I mean, other than just the pop-up stuff here and there, that's all I've got planned for for this year, um, which this year is almost over. Can y'all believe that? I know, it's crazy. Um, but I think that's all. I'd love to get um, um, this crew over to Broken Bow at some point and there's a few locations I got my eyes on, but, you know, my team's really small. That's one reason why I normally invite them or, you know, somebody to go along with us. Normally it's them crazy fools. <laughs> yeah, I think the members of your crew are very important, and you guys have a pretty awesome group. I do have to do a shameless plug, if y'all don't mind, real quick. Um, on Facebook, if you look up um, Paranormal Against Missing and Exploited Children, um, myself and Beth Allen are co-founders of that group. What we do um, now, I've been dealing with renovations of a home, so I'm kind of slacking on it. But everybody's welcome to share whatever they find. If, as a paranormal investigator, we travel a lot, we hit a lot of truck stops, we hit a lot of rest stops, things like that. And um, what we're doing is we are posting about missing children across America so that as people are out, um, you know, traveling, we're not asking for, you know, anybody to get involved with the police or anything. Just as you're traveling, keep your eyes open for those areas um and i mean i actually had a mother reach out to us um now we did not find her daughter but we were kept posting about it and her daughter was found and she was just so thankful that we were putting it out there because in this industry we've got several people who are truck drivers cops you know are just in general travel with what we do that we just want everybody to keep their eyes open because there's too many children that come up missing that get involved with human trafficking. It started because um, my daughter, um, now thankfully she's on the right path now, but she got that into drugs, was a runaway, and got involved in human trafficking. And um, then Beth, the other co-founder, her niece, um, ran off and ended up being a 20-something-year-old man she was with, and she was, thought she was meeting up with, like, an 18-year-old boy, and she was in the process of being put on human trafficking, and the paranormal community rallied together and helped um, Beth while she was, they were trying to find her. Um, they were helping her with places to eat, or, I mean, with food, you know, come by, grab some food here. Um, helping her try to get hotel rooms because she had to go all the way from Atlanta, Georgia to um, El Paso, Texas, because that was mm -hmm. where they were found out she was heading to. And so the paranormal community, as much drama as can be in it, when we want me to pull together, we truly pull together. And so I had to put a shameless plug, follow the group, post 
if you see it I'll come across Facebook, if you have an Amber Alert come across your phone, share it to that page. Like I said, I'm dealing with renovations of a house, so I'm kind of a little slow on it, but we left it open so that others could post when they see stuff like that. And what is the name of the page again? Mm -hmm. Paranormal Against Missing and Exploited Children. All right. On that note, um, we do have to go to our second music break. So on this break, we got Miss Tanner Bubble again from the uh, greater New York area. Then we have Griff from Toronto, Canada. Uh, Adonis, a.k.a. Britt Casey from Boston. Griff again. And prime example featuring Roy Washington, our musical host, who gives us all of our music for our music breaks. So we don't have to listen to tons of commercials every day, all day. You guys don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this music break. Pringles in the can, all the money really got me dancing. Pringles in the whip, I be taking, be taking them chips like Pringles in the can, all the money really got me dancing. Big bank, baby, I'm on the grip, I be taking, be taking them chips. Pringles in the can, all the money really got me dancing. Pringles in the whip, I be taking, be taking them chips like Pringles in the can, all the money really got me dancing. Big bank, baby, I'm on the grip, I be taking, be taking them. I ain't never been afraid of a strange beat. Wow. New track from the crates, but the same me. Lights on, bills paid, bring the same heat. Couldn't pitch me, spend the same unless you bring me. Low key, humble brag, never change me. New money coming in the bank's changing. Wow. Two quarters to dollars, to checks every hour. That money come in when I sleep or I shower. That's motivation, that dedication. I can see my dreams, I'm already chasing. That bezel clean, and watch me embrace it. I'm a single girl, but they're already taking like a stick up kid. They're already shaking. No Harlem, Brooklyn, been known for breaking. Bubble on deck, been known for cake. Stacking and stacking and stacking and saving that move up. Out the hood, money. This that we been eating good money. This that really what you would, homie This that see you laughing but broke ain't funny So get up out the hood, homie Ain't no rentals over here, dummy And I'm down really think that we own it Who we been poppin', we been poppin' Look on, love the money, love the money Love it long time, it on Yeah, them bills, look at the money With my own ground, that's who up out the hood, money This that we been eating good money This that really what you would, homie All the money really got me dancing. Pringles in the whip. I be taking, be taking them chips like Pringles in the can. All the money really got me dancing. Big bank, baby, I'm on the grip. I be taking, be taking them chips. Pringles in the can. All the money really got me dancing. Pringles in the whip. I be taking, be taking them chips like Pringles in the can. All the money really got me dancing. Big bank, baby, I'm on the grip. I be taking, be taking them. I ain't never been afraid of investing. I'm talking more than dice games and I'm scratch offs. Lottery jackpots and a hunch of me. So who you think they making money on the back door? Ain't no gambling. They ain't no gambling where my money. That I built up, got my money strong, get my money long, get my money long. Now one business, but no business. Natural growth, I mean no business. New growth like my natural hair. Yeah, I'm ten toes down in the show business. Like back up, back up, back up, boss. Man, ain't no move around, no business. Bring the track up with the track out in the booth, right? Steady running your mind, talking this and that, but it's that. Move up out the hood, money. This that we been eating good money.
yo, here's a scoop. You can still be a slave, you're a whipping loop. Eh, eh. That's the truth, got big houses, nice cars That's real cute, but that doesn't mean nothing You ain't free to choose When I say free to choose No alarm clock, don't gotta hit the snooze The world is backwards, I'm so confused They say freedom of speech, but when you speak your mind They blow a fuse Just being honest, common sense and common It's kind of ironic, my freedom I recently bought it, now I'm a target If I do the wrong thing, or say the wrong thing Come on man, let freedom ring States become divided states. The world is filled with all kinds of shades, and still, and still resegregate. Parents separate from the children. That's not okay. We should be free to laugh and play. Do it now before you pass away. Fight for what's right. Enough for everybody to get piece of the pie. Greenwash social media full of lies. Go to work, pay bills, then you die. Need a breakaway. Guns get rid of the AKs. Our ancestors paved way since the slave days, but we still. Hurting, carry that burden. Stop playing victim. Beat the system. Love is love. It should be shown. Can't grow unless you leave your comfort zone. This I know. I learned all this from the mentorship. Kids don't know what independent is. Take advantage what your parents did. Go against the grid. You have to. Like going to the bathroom. Learn the right songs. Cause of Matthew. Liberty like statue. They call now the present. Cause it's a gift. It should be cherished. Last name fearless. Not Harris, all thanks to my parents' parents. Now, love the last name every time that I hear it. Cause I know what it represents. Climb the fence, so now I got freedom. Such a beautiful thing. Freedom. Such a wonderful thing. Thing, thing, thing. Freedom. Such a beautiful thing. Maybe 
she working And the second time I call, I'm like, little bit hurting But the third time I call, I'm like, going berserk And now half a day gone, can't get her on the horn Usually in the morn, maybe get something wrong I mean, she wouldn't take this long to call back She be tight like that, she's supposed to be mine So could you please try it one more time?
dance all night, little lady, it's your call. Step, 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 baby, follow my lead. You and me showing off for the club to see. No time to get dressed, we doing our thing. Cha, cha, then we dip, top it off with a spin. Glide across the floor, let's do it again. By the way, little mama, can we be friends? I came up this night just in. I really want to know if I can see you again. Give me your number, we'll get back on the scene. We can hit another club if that's your thing. We'll be partners in crime, you and me, as we ripping up floors like two dancing machines. Welcome back, and thank you so much for joining me this evening on We Are Paradox Media's Late Night in the Rockies. We are joined by Tangipahoa Parish Paranormal Society with Lindy. We also got Eileen and Tommy. Um, you guys, take it away. Uh, the kids just came in with an emergency, so give me one moment. You guys, take the show. Go for it, Lindy. Well, not everybody talking one time. <laughs> and uh, John uh, just texted me. He said, uh, "Looks like I'm not going to be able to be able to make it tonight." So I guess he won't be on at all. Mm -hmm. Poor Tommy. That part, that part of So, Tommy, so what is yeah. your, like, what location have you investigated, like, has stuck with you more than any other location? Uh, the hospital in Mississippi. <laughs> I already knew that was coming. Yeah, uh, I mean, that that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I knew that one. Like, it was just... It was just nuts <clears throat> after that, you know, after the actual investigation, you know, you know for two weeks, uh, I, I was messed up pretty much, um, which I already pretty much told the story on here, but, uh, like, I, I could just be sitting here, <clears throat> you know, sitting in the uh, living room or whatever, watching, watching TV and... I would just all of a sudden want to get up and just trash the whole place. And that's not me, you know? And uh, other times, you know, I can be sitting there just watching TV again. And all of a sudden, I would get this like sudden urge to just get down in, in the middle of the, in the middle of the floor and uh, like, getting all these contortions kind of positions and I don't know. I, I, I was messed up. <laughs> Chanel was messaging me too and calling me saying like you were like in all kinds of weird positions like in the bed too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because uh, we have a um, isolating fan at the foot of the bed and uh, of course I work night so I sleep. <clears throat> I work night so I sleep during the day and uh, she came in there for to go to the bathroom or something and uh, she said I was completely flipped around uh, with, with, with my head to an automatic voice 
system 9853354218 is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hi, Josh. Get your message either because you were not speaking or because of a bad connection. To disconnect, press 1. To record your message, press 2. Are you still there? To disconnect, press 1. To record your message, press 2. That is so weird because I repeatedly pressed remove from call and it Are you still there? To disconnect, keep press saying 1. I kicked to record out, but... your message, press 2. Weird. Sorry, you were having trouble. Yeah. Please try Hi. again later. Goodbye. Bye. The same Bye. With you. What location I'm having stuck out to you the most? Um, honestly, it's probably um broken bow because you know you you want that to happen if something when something was thrown at me because we were sitting around and. When I say we were sitting in a circle, we, it wasn't a real circle. But um, Ashley was across from me, Shannon was to the left of me. There were other people behind me, but nobody was behind Ashley, which is the owner of Broken Bow. And we were playing with the cat ball, and because we felt like she, you know, there's only a little kid in that area. And all of a sudden, she said, You can throw something because something, it's been fun to throw things out there. You can throw something, but you can't hit anyone because no one's done anything wrong for you to hit them. And next thing I know, something goes straight past Ashley, goes past my head, and hits this um, piece of furniture behind me and makes this loud bang. It was so loud. It was going so hard that my digital recorder, you can hear it cutting through the air. And um, so, I mean, Ashley was close enough to me because I had to go, well, maybe she threw it. Well, first of all, I could see her. I would have seen her arm move. But secondly, she was too close to me to get that much force behind something. And just having something actually thrown at you was like, wow, something has enough energy to do that. And it was a very active night already. But um, that was probably my most memorable experience. What about you, Lindy? Um, mine's probably going to be at Rampart. Um, I immediately started being affected, like, when I stepped through the threshold, like, my ears started burning. And I kept saying something, like, I'm, I'm asking Mallory, and I'm like, like, what is on my ear? Like, my ear's on fire. Like, it feels like it's burning. And she's like, your ear's really red. And it was just my right ear. And, of course, she's like messing with it, and she's like, your ear's really, really hot. And I'm like, I know, like, it's hurting. Well, we get on in there and get set up, and we get upstairs in the department. At this point in time, like, I knew nothing about this location. This was the second location I'd ever been to. Like, I knew a murder had took place there, but I did not know, like, how it happened or anything else. Um, so we get upstairs, and... We had been in like the bedroom area, come walk through the living room, we're headed into the kitchen. And when you walk into the kitchen door, you walk straight into the stove and then you have to turn to the right and there's a refrigerator. And then you turn back to the left to go to the sink and then a bathroom. And I remember getting around the corner past the fridge and like at this point in time, my ear literally feels like it has flames coming out of it. And I'm, I'm just looking at like Brian and Mallory and I'm like, I can't be in here anymore. Like I've got to go back out to the living room. And I had a periscope in my hand. And so I go sit down in the, the living room. And, of course, like, I'm just holding my ear because at this point in time, like, my ear is just, like, killing me. So I'm sitting there messing with it. And, of course, my periscope's going off on the right side, too. So Bloody Mary's looking over at me. And she had already, I'd already asked her, like, hey, like, what's up with my ear burning or whatever? And she was like, your ear's still bothering you. I'm like, yes. Like, it, like I couldn't even be in that room anymore. And she was like, all right, Abby, leave her alone. And why in the world did she say that? Because at that point in time, from my shoulders up, felt this way. And, like, you see me, because we had a DVR system set up, or, well, she did. And you see me on the DVR system, like, stand up, and I, like, beeline for the door trying to get downstairs. 
and she comes down man, and she's like are you okay I'm like no like literally like my head feels like it is on fire at this point in time and she's like well do you know what happened here and I'm like yeah like oh a murder God. took place whatever and she's like no like do you really know like how it happened and I'm like no like, the details. what is going on and, and this process like by this point in time like I'm putting holy water on my ear I'm putting Florida water on me trying to cool me down and she was like well the guy Zach chopped his girlfriend up into pieces left her body there I think it was like 13 days he couldn't figure out how to dispose of her body so he literally put her head on the stove to boil which was what I was feeling and then he put her arms and feet in the oven and then wrapped her torso and put her in the freezer well we left and finally after a long while like my head and stuff kind of cooled down well the next day I was like I need to get back over here like I just need to go release some of this energy off of me so the next day like I asked I was like hey look I don't want to go back upstairs I just want to step foot through the threshold downstairs to see if I get affected again and so this time when I set foot instead of me feeling the hot I felt the freezing cold of her being put in the freezer Mm. yeah Yeah, and I remember. And I remember the story of everything that happened. I, I, man, I'd love to get over that way. And it was insane, and like we called some really cool EVPs that night. Like we have one where you hear Addie come through there, and like you hear, I think uh, might have been Brian asking, like you know, like uh, why are you still here or whatever? Mm-hmm. Like why won't you leave? And like it, like you hear the female come through, plain as day, like he's not ready. But yeah, that's probably my my most profound moment other than how we felt that night at the hospital, like that Tommy was talking about. Yeah, for me, it's such a sad story because before you even told me about that, I knew about what happened there upstairs from the voodoo shop. And they were like yeah. the most awesome, loving couple, never had any issues, anything like that. And then, um, you know, Hurricane Katrina, all that stuff happened and and it does change things, yeah. but not that much. So it makes me wonder, was well, it uh, you... the combination of the hurricane and of the voodoo shop downstairs and perhaps some sort well, of spirit that might have come in and encroached on their area because it's just upstairs? I don't know. I think his issue started before that, because if you actually go back and research him, he he was a veteran. I think he suffered from some PTSD. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, when Katrina come through and that being as catastrophic as it was, um, and then, of course, you know, the beauty shop did not help the situation either. But just the storm itself, um, the energy from it alone, like, I think it just threw him kind of into overload. But I remember coming back from that investigation. I think I slept for probably three days straight. I think I got up to go to the bathroom and maybe grab something to drink or snack on and went right back to bed. Like, I was so drained. And it took forever for me to get back, like, 100%. So was Tommy there, too? Because, I don't know, like, for me, I just can't get past the feeling that there was something paranormal involved in that. Yes, he has PTSD. Yes, you know, all this other shit was happening. But this was quite a while after Katrina had happened. And things were kind of like moving back towards getting back to normal stage when, when it did happen. I mean, yeah, but they get... actually were out like helping people during yeah. you know, the aftermath of Katrina. Yeah. I think you pick something up somewhere. I'm not, I'm not saying even if it could be the voodoo shop, it's, it's Bloody Mary. I'm not saying that at all. But like you said, they were helping other people throughout this. So maybe, you know, different shit blows in during these different storms. Mother Nature, paranormal, all of us like kind of collide in all this. So I don't know. I just can't get over that feeling that it was something that, that followed them home. Something else happened. I don't think it was him. And that what what strikes me too is like, you know, like he sat there almost like he realized at that point in time like that that wasn't him like trying to figure out what to do and then you know he wound up taking his own life too you know I feel like kind of from the guilt from it Mm -hmm. um but I mean who knows that could have been something on the other side too making him take his own life instead of you know actually owning up to it and 
Or it could be like, this is what happened and nobody's ever going to believe this. I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison. You know? Yep. Yes, that's kind of where I'm going with that. Like, that's so sad. But yeah, that's insane that you felt that. So do you think that's residual or that's a spirit there trying to make you feel like this is what happened or why do you think that happened to you? Um, I think the spirits that are there, Zach and Hattie, I think they are both um, empathetic spirits. And I feel like that was kind of their way of telling their story to somebody you know of what happened maybe that was Addie's way of being like okay like here's this empathetic person let, let me show her what what it felt like for me going through this you know that was her way to get her story out there yeah yeah and you said he's still quiet so maybe he's still fighting with his demons and eventually he'll come out to try to get help to get across I'm not sure yeah. I feel like he's kind of in limbo. I I I felt that about him too, like very much so. And well, I almost feel like feel like he's not real comfortable with the situation as far as people coming in and doing what they're doing there as far as investigating and stuff and it being like almost like a tourist attraction. I don't mm -hmm. think he's a hundred percent okay with that aspect either yeah definitely well we have about 30 minutes left is there anything big going on um other than anything we've discussed previous that you guys wanted to hit on there was another upcoming event wasn't there yeah, we're actually helping Brian Riley's team out over in Natchez. Um, so if y'all are out this way, tickets went on sale today. There's not many left. It's almost sold out. Um, it's Friday and Saturday night event, the 30th and then the 1st of October. Um, it's two locations. It's going to be the Natchez Little Theater and then the Old Parsonage. And Brian always does, like, amazing events and I'm sure he'll um, probably do a question and answer type thing and um, tell some of his stories. And he's such a good, like, storyteller and historian, so. So is there a certain site they can find him on, or do they just look him up by his name? Um, crap. Why would you ask me that? I could have told you the name of his team. Hold on. Let me go look at this bar. Uh. Why did you why did you ask me that? Why did you put I'm me on sorry. the water? Who told you? Because <laughs> I don't know where to find it. <laughs> there's a guy named Brian. There's this cool shit going on. Where do I find Brian? Yeah, it is. Um, hold on. You put me on the spot and I have I have a brain fart. Mm hmm I do that a lot. I think it might be genetic. You better have time is way too long now. It's gonna be the Mississippi <laughs> Paranormal Society is gonna be the page. Yep, yep, that's going to be Natchez Little Theater and the Parsonage, September 30th and October 1st. Very cool. Most definitely. Poor Josh is MIA. Josh, where are you? Are you okay? <laughs> I think he messaged Tommy and said that he was still stuck with what he was doing and can't, isn't going to be able to make it. He probably knew he wouldn't get a word in his life. Yeah, that's true. No, because Tessa makes him talk. She pulls it out of him. <laughs> she doesn't have a choice in the matter. Yeah, so I had a friend invite me to, uh, she told me about this haunted place, here's what's going on. It's $140 per ticket. I'm like, holy shit, I don't even think I can afford that. And she's like, well, I'll help you out with the money if you can split the room with me and blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, but yeah, come to find out, it's all the way up in Montana. I'm like, holy shit, that's a long ways away. Is and it, I, is it Butte, Montana? Huh? Is it the stuff out in Butte, Montana? I believe so. Yes. The cabbage patch and all that. Mm, it's like the haunted house. Like you can stay there and do an investigation. Um, I'd have to look it up again. Let me pull it up real quick. But yeah, and then there's a thing like if you have four or more people, you get a, a discount. So I was like, do you know what the price is for that? And she never got back to me. It's probably like, uh, look it up on your own. But yeah, let me pull it up really quick. Let's see where exactly that is. Montana. Oh, Gunslinger Gulch. So that's in Anaconda, Montana. October 8th or 22nd. Overnight investigation, 130 per person. Group discount for four or more tickets, but it doesn't say what the group discount is. Um, yeah. Montana, so it's all the way up in Montana. And I have issues. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I have issues writing with people because my mom died in a car accident. So it's just like, that's a long way to put my life in your hands. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to go to Butte, Montana last year out in that way and go do um, the Cabbage Patch and something else. It was going to, it was like me and my old partner, um, Shannon Rogers, Rich um, Valdez, and uh, his. Um, old lady so we were all supposed to do that last year but everything fell through so i was like well it wasn't supposed to be it wasn't supposed to be um but we were talking the other day and a lot of places either a i don't mind paying for like historical location because if the money goes back into the historical location because i mean you gotta preserve them but some of these places once they're on television once they become popular they jack their prices up so bad so i really respect like there's this one place in ballinger texas old park hotel it's like if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but it's like 350 dollars for an overnight you get to stay there it doesn't matter if it's one person or whatever and i think there's and i could be wrong i think there's like 11 rooms so you could really split it good mm -hmm. the only problem is it's on the other side of texas so it's like a 10, 12 hour drive for me and for the, for the guys. But, um, but we, we were talking about that the other day. You have some places that used to charge X amount per person. They get on television, they jump it up. I mean, just outrageous because people think we make money doing this. We spend a heck of a lot more, a heck of a lot of money doing this. You're going debt top. doing this shit. <laughs> like, no. We're going in debt, but we love it. Well, that's, I mean, that's why I do like, you know, these these small places that no one's ever heard of because, I mean, they need some love, too, to keep their businesses going because, I mean, let's be real. These historical places are businesses. and But when you see people, like, um, charging outrageous prices and they're pocketing the money just to be pocketing it, and you're like, are you kidding me? You're just trying to make money off the paranormal when everyone's supposed to be out here for the same experience. Yeah, and they'd make a lot more money if they charge less. Because when it's so outrageous, not everybody can go, but people will make, you know, exceptions if it's not too much. But when it's 140 or whatever per person, I'm like, seriously, does this come with, you know, some really good salmon or filet mignon or, you know, why am I paying this much? <laughs> You should, can I just rent a room? Yeah. <laughs> like a group of friends were all going to Ohio State Penitentiary. And I think it was like $100 per person. Well, that's a huge location. You know, so it takes a lot of money to keep that place going. But then you get something that's like a two-room shack that costs yeah. the same price. And you're like, seriously? Yeah, that's when I'm like, I'm just going to rent a room and do my own thing. <laughs> Tommy, are you alive over there? 
Tommy, can you hear us? Tommy, uh -oh. I got Twinkie. Oh. Now they're coming out with different flavors of those, and I'm too I'm too scared to try it. <laughs> those are not my favorite flavors, so I'm gonna pass. Has the last Somebody was telling me I had a customer come in and tell me they're coming out with a new like Mountain Dew, and it's like a sweet and spicy or something. And I was like, no, I'm not even okay with that. That's too much. Oh. Like pumpkin spice and everything. But a drink? Like, no. <laughs> I just don't know. Tommy! But I say, can y'all see him or anything? Is he still alive? No, you guys are all on phones. I can see myself, which is kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, you guys are all on phones. I thought you guys could see me for the longest time because you guys are like, oh, there she is, the telemarketer, because I had my headphones on and shit. So then I had to do my <laughs> interpretation of a <laughs> telemarketer. And then you guys are like, no, I can't see you. I'm like, oh, shit. I thought you could see me this whole time. Oh, Skype, what do you do? I mean, I'm glad you came on tonight and kept me company. Well, I'm glad you invited me. <laughs> what are you guys well, at this point do? in time, like, you're just one of us, so, I mean, you're just an extension of our, our group, so. Yeah, I think he, Tommy made a comment. He's like, are you coming here? I said, well, I didn't know I was inviting on something else. I was like, I didn't know I was inviting you. He goes, uh, duh. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to say I'll go do the gothic jail that's what I, I want to go do that oh I think he's back so what is the gothic jail oh it's over in Jerome, Louisiana yeah go ahead and tell about it I don't know all the details but it's just it's cool that's all I care about it's cool looking yeah it, it looks to me, kind of like an old, like, gothic castle type building. Um, but it's, but it is an old jail. I don't remember exactly when it was built. Um, a friend of mine does the tours and stuff over there. Um, we actually planned on going over there and something, something happened and we wound up having to reschedule. And then the dates that we had available a week ago, they didn't have available. And then we just had other stuff come up. So we really need to get back on trying to get back in over there. But it's it's a really cool looking building. And where is that again? In DeRitter, Louisiana. Nice. There's so many pretty and amazing things in Louisiana. I couldn't believe that bridge we drove over. I was like, shit, I don't even remember this, but I think we were driving at night on the way down there. So I didn't see it. But that bridge over the water like goes forever from New Orleans. Um, I had yeah. to drive back because my sister was really oh, sick, and I was like, holy crap, I don't remember all this water. Had I known, I'd be really fucking scared. You're talking about the, uh, over, going over the pond to try. I believe so, yeah. yeah. It was just like yeah. miles. Well, there was right, something in... Yeah. Huh? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I'm um, sorry. No, there were, uh, it was a rental. It was a charger, and there's something in the road. I couldn't see it, but I think it was like part of this side rail, which is concrete, like crumbled in one spot. And I think I hit part of that. And my sister woke up. She's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> it's okay. There was just something on the road. I don't know what it was, but luckily we didn't get a flat. But yeah, it was miles and miles. It seemed like hours. Well, another location I've been I've been looking into. Um, and you may know about it cause being from Arkansas is the Allen House. Um, I don't watch a lot of the television shows and nothing against anybody that's on them because, you know, I, you know, I love a lot of those people, but the, um, I'll start watching some of the old, like from the original stuff because by then now people don't remember the locations as much, but, um, but it's the Allen House out in Arkansas. And I'm oh, sorry, there's a train going by. The um, there's 
it was a woman. She was supposed to go meet up with her lover. They found like old letters in the wall and mm-hmm. something happened and he he was married and he was supposed to leave his wife and didn't leave his wife and she, I think she ended up killing herself or something. Yeah, there was like it. a dinner party and she like excused herself and went up to her room and ingested something. I don't know if she overdosed on pills or if it was some sort of poison or something, but she ingested something and died during the dinner party that was going down uh, downstairs. Yeah, I mean, I, I've reached out to them, and I ta- I think I talked to you, Lindy, about it, because um, I don't think it's that far of a drive that we could make it back to Mississippi, but the guys would have a heck of a drive. Yeah, yeah. We need to do that. I'm all for it. If we could get them to tie down dates and times, that's the thing. Can you how difficult that problem. is? Like, it's so difficult. It's like pulling teeth from a kid, from a freaking toddler. Like, it's horrible. I have to stay on them. Oh, boys. I wish more than hours. Yeah, I think Tommy's still there. I think he just, like, muted the mic or something. Is Tommy and Ron there, just hanging out? <laughs> like, these girls... Well, I'm about to say, we're, not, we're not hearing snoring, so he's not sitting there asleep unless, like you said, he's muted his mic. Yeah, I think he's oh, yeah, on to us and he muted the mic. <laughs> it was uh, so funny. The first time I met them, we were at the funeral home. Now, the funeral home, I will say, it's a very reasonable price. It's like $350, too. But you can stay the night there. And um, so you can bring an air mattress or do like I do and just sleep on the pew. It's actually a very comfortable pew. So Tommy and Josh were in the pews across from me. Um, David Childers was in the pew in front of me. And there was a bunch of other people. And um, you could, of course, between Tommy and David, you couldn't sleep because of the snoring. It's so funny all these guys would go with, and they snore their butts off. I haven't heard about the farting that night, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. It was, so it would be the first time you meet him, you're like, okay, now I could go over to him and say, and knock on him and say, shut up. You're snoring, keeping me away. David, I could always pop him upside the head and be like, come on now. I mean, as a female in this, in this, you know, industry. You gotta learn how to keep up with the guy. <laughs> you gotta be just one of the guys in a way. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, like Lindy, she's opposite of me. She's like, I'm the only girl in this group and I need some more females and my group has always been like female, but I just love when that male energy comes in. I don't know. I enjoy it. And she's like, no, I need more I women. Always, <laughs> I was always like, Lindy, where I was always one of the only girls. Um, Cause unfortunately I went through a few teams because my second team was with David. And then he moved to New Hampshire. He's like, Hey, you can just take over the team. I was like, no, cause there were people that was on the team longer than me. I didn't feel comfortable with that. Then I ended up with um, another one of my paranormal partners and then he retired from the paranormal he's like hey just keep the name you know you've been going with it it was just the two of us and then when he retired me and him talked and I, that's when I brought Shelby in and then of course in the midst of all this is when I met them and I'm an honorary TPPS <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just take my I'm gonna take my shirt and we'll make Back Rose Paranormal sponsored by TPPS. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being my foster group. We got to get Shelby out more. Yeah, yeah, she's got a younger kid, so that does get a little bit harder for her. At least our kids are kind of mm-hmm. getting up there to where, I know my youngest is 14, my oldest is 27, so... Now, my grandbaby's moving in with us, and 
Um, I've been on the phone with my friends, and they're like, you know something's in your house. I'm like, shut up. Let's not go. You know, because the house I'm moving into is my husband's childhood home. And my, unfortunately, my father-in-law just passed away in January, so it's his home. Oh, and no. they're like, it's not him in there, so we don't know who it is. because. <laughs> but, yeah, and then our next-door neighbor found out what I did. And they're like, oh, you know, our house is haunted. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, because when you go home, that's supposed to be your safe haven. Then I go, and David is the one. David and Beth caught this. We want we're odd people, and I, my youngest son's birthday is on Halloween, awesome. so we're a, one of those that just go all out on Halloween. So when everybody found out I was a paranormal investigator, I'm like, oh gosh, they're they're gonna think like, we're these like weirdos or something when we get ready to decorate for Halloween. Well, then my husband, the house that I have, the out external part of it, is extremely, like, it's got, like, black trim, dark brick, so it's extremely dark. I told him, I said, I need a little light in the house. So we painted our front door purple. Well, upon researching, just out of just curiosity, after we painted it, purple door means a witch lives here. Yes, most well, um, definitely. Right. My poor neighbors are going to hate me, even though most of them know my husband is a kid. My poor neighbors are going to hate me. I said, but you can probably change the W to a B and they'll be accurate. Right? <laughs> most definitely. I was watching that uh, live feed the other day from the hospital when you were actually calling me that word. What's it for you two? It's just saying. You never know what's going to come out of my mouth. There is no filter. I'm actually really, I'm really tame tonight. I've noticed. Yeah, me too. Are you okay? <laughs> well, you know I do the podcast on Thursday nights and Friday nights. So I think I'm just kind of going, I'm tired of being on the phone. Yeah. You're going to get uh, cauliflower ear. <laughs> I like it. I yeah. only do it two days a week, like you. Unless I'm invited somewhere yeah. else, then I go over there. But I really like it. It's really helped me out a lot. I was kind of scared to do it at first. I'm like, mm, I have social anxiety. I don't know if I can do this. And then once I started doing it, I was hooked. And I just really enjoy we'll it. Have we'll have to get you on um, one of our Friday night ones. Lindy, you need to, too. Um, yeah. We kind of focus more on the women of the paranormal. Now we, we have brought Rich Valdez on it. Ours are more podcast than podcast. So we'll have to, you have to send me a message. We'll have to get you on one night. And that way you can promote yours. Nice. Also, I need votes, you guys, because I really want to win this contest. I was in first place. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I think I'm going to get through the first round. I'm like uh, top 20. There's so many different groups. I think there's 20 different groups. Top 20 of that goes on to the next uh, round. So it's 20 people on that one. goes down to 15, 10. Oh, it's November 10th is the end of it. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can do that. Like, it's stressing me out already. But, like you said, a shameless plug. So I'm going to do one. Okay, so hey, friends. Was, I mean, yeah, we're all for, here to support each other. See, that's what I thought. And everybody's like, um, it's asking for my bank card, so I don't want to do it. It's a scam. And I'm like, no, they're just trying to be like, oh, this isn't this psychotic contestant that's trying to win and has made so many different accounts and they're voting for themselves. Um, we need a bank card or some other thing like Facebook account. I think Lindy said earlier, different things like that, where they're like, okay, you are who you say you are. And then you can vote. But they're like, oh, no, because there's so many scams going on. They're like, this is a scam, but it's not. Even my husband's done it. And he's like, um, it's asking for my bank card. And I'm trying to do the free one. They just want to know it's you and not me. So, um, See, I don't know why it keeps asking. It's like that when I look at them, it has underneath the bank card, there's another one that says one free vote. And you click on that one. Okay, so I didn't go down that far. I just saw like that pop up. So maybe people are doing the same thing as me and not scrolling down because automatically you see that and you're like, 
to get that block up that's like, this kind of seems like a scam. Why do I need to put my bank card in? But yeah, scroll down, uh, like Eileen said, and that's the free vote. I mean, yeah, so did, and then, then if you keep scrolling down, it asks for more, like if you want 10 votes, it's like a dollar a vote if you mm-hmm. want to do that. But it's like in between where it asks for your bank card, or like it's, it's like verifying via bank card, and it's verifying via Facebook, something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the verbiage. But if you, then if you keep scrolling down, you can purchase a dollar a vote, you know, basically. If you do $10, it's 10 votes, things like that. But in between those sections is where the free vote is. Yeah, and it's always the black button. Um, and the red one has an S and then in parentheses or whatnot, it says scare. So scare vote. And that's the one where if you want to purchase votes, you can. And at least 25% of what people pay in goes to the B-plus foundation, which is for kids for cancer and their families going through the whole ordeal, um, all their different things that they have to pay for, et cetera. It helps those families that have kids with cancer going on, which I hate cancer anyways, but really now kids, kids have to have cancer. Like I cannot stand it. That is to me so unfair. I don't know. Kids should be off limits to anything negative. Yeah. <laughs> should be forbidden. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. But, yes, at least 25% of that goes to that foundation. E plus sign foundation. I can't remember the name of the first part, but that, to me, makes it easier to do the pay thing because, hey, like, you're helping out the kids. You should do that anyways if you don't vote. But um, so. I'll give you the link really quick. It's face of horror forward slash 2022 forward slash Tessa T E S S A dash Thomas D H O M A S dash Peterson. And then you'll get my whole thing. It's got my pictures. Why I'm doing this. Why I would last to the end of a scary movie. So how would you guys survive to the end of a scary movie? I definitely wouldn't run upstairs. Like that to me is stupid. To get away, you're going to run upstairs where you have nowhere to go. And don't run into um, a place you're going to corner yourself. Run into an, either an open field that you can see things coming. I don't know. <laughs> no, because my scary movies are like, oh, let's run into this old barn um, where we trap ourselves in here with all these sharp objects. Like they could. For slaughtering oh, pigs, you know. <laughs> What was that commercial that did that? That they were showing? Like, yeah, they're talking, they're talking about. She's like, let's just go to the car. <laughs> they know, let's run over to this barn. That is why everybody, when you're going through a, a middle of nowhere, make sure you have a full tank of gas. So your car does not run out of gas next to the serial killer's house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I had an experience coming back from Arkansas. I don't know where the hell we were, but it was like fields and fields and fields of corn for miles and miles and miles. And for miles ahead of you, there's still fields of corn. And my car started to overheat. And I'm like, I'm not going to stop here. I'm just going to slow down my speed. I'm going to get to the next town. We only have 15 more miles. Oh. And you walk one from like Texas Chainsaw Massacre territory. Or children of the corn shit. Like, no. Right. <laughs> I was actually going to tell you, I was driving through Texas and someone had to have a serious joke going on because you were driving down the street, middle of nowhere, and you had the cornfields near you. I'm thinking it's Texas. I don't remember what state I was in, but, and it, you were in the middle of nowhere and there was a street sign that said, caution children at play. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> Don't stop for any kids. I was like, that was it was funny. I I, I was laughing for miles. I was like, that was too. <laughs> no, I mean, because obviously there was no y'all. I mean, nowhere children were gonna run around out there. But so it was obviously a joke. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that sort of humor. We need more of that. We do. De- definitely. 
All right, so we are down to our last three minutes. Where can our uh, peeps out there listening find you guys at Tangible Hill with? Uh, we are on Facebook, Tangible Hill Parish Paranormal Society, and then we do have a YouTube page as well. So you guys have like live Eileen. videos and videos on there? Oh yeah, we've got lots of lives. We typically do live um, nice. from most locations. So we've had requests for that. And actually the next um, event that we do, um, that's actually our event, we're going to try to figure out a way to set up a live feed for that as well. So if you can't actually get your ticket and come, you'll be able to get a ticket to watch the live feed. We're trying to figure that out for YouTube. Yeah, um, actually one of my accounts has been attacked and they're making me do the whole meta business bullshit. And I don't want to do it because I'm like, I'm not making any money yet. I have plans, but... Never have I made money on this. It's all been voluntary, so take this meta shit off because I can't invite my friends or anything. Now it's like, now I gotta get people to follow instead of like my page. It's ridiculous. But we are at the end of our time. I really, uh, where can people find you? Uh, you can just look me up on Facebook under Eileen, I L E N E Jones, or you can follow on Backroads Paranormal. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me this evening on the show. It's been awesome having you. We always have fun. Well, you guys hold on because I want to talk to you a little longer after the show. And thank you to all of our friends on We Are Paradox Media's KPN Radio, Facebook, Twitter, iHeartRadio, and wherever else beyond the Omniverse you're listening tonight. I had an awesome time, and I cannot wait to do it again tomorrow night. We got Vinny, Funkmaster B, and Luke Walker, if you if, 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 on Netflix and chill. We're just going to talk about the shows, different things going on. They're actually filming a new show. I believe this one, instead of being Vinny's, is Luke's, and it's called Camp Smokey. Can't wait to see it, because I love those B-rate horror movies. And theirs are better than B-rate, I have to tell you. They do a really good job with it. News. You guys, don't forget, we are all in this together. Together, we can make the world a little better. And together, we are Paradox Media because without you, there is no us. Until next time, 99, love and light. Take care of my use, and we'll see you back here same time, same buddy place.